عين إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرة First and foremost, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward every single one of you guys for sacrificing the World Cup final. To listen to the lesson today, barakallahu bikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase every single one of you guys in khair. We know that when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a time when there are a lot of distractions, the reward is so much more greater. And this is a qa'idah, a maxim, that Ibn Rajab rahmatullahi alayhi mentions in his qawaid is when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Al-ibadatu fil harji ka hijratin ilayya Right? Worshipping Allah azza wa jalla at a time when there are killings It is as if you have made hijra to me And of course there's not killings going on but the common feature in that which we mention is distractions that which blocks an individual from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially when it becomes extremely rampant and widespread. Before I move on to the third, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in Surah Al-Hujurat, I quickly want to mention two things, inshaAllah ta'ala, that I forgot to mention in the last lesson. We mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent down this surah, لِيُؤَدِّبَ بِهَا أَهْلَ iman in order to adorn the people of faith with the best of etiquettes. We can take a huge lesson from this, my brothers and my sisters, and that is, sometimes what can happen is, after we start practicing, or after some doors of ibadat are opened up to us, we can get extremely complacent, or maybe even deluded with ourselves. We just started practicing or we've embraced the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have been taught how to be from those who bi-idhnillahi ta'ala will be in a very good place in the hereafter. And we become extremely, extremely deluded with ourselves. You could even maybe call it the saved sect syndrome where one now begins to walk on the face of this earth as if he has some sort of green card to enter into Al-Jannah. Today someone showed me what the Sunnah is. I am now a Sunni. Or someone who is upon the way of the Salaf, then khalas. He becomes extremely complacent. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down the Surah to adorn them with the best of faith, with the best of etiquettes, this is after they have entered into Al-Islam. We as Muslims, my brothers and my sisters, we do not become deluded with ourselves. We worship Allah Azza wa Jal in between two things, which is Al-Khawf wa Raja. Hope and likewise fear. You just carried out a good deed. Sometimes this happens after we have come out the month of Ramadan. 30 days of fasting, 30 days of standing in the night. I can maybe now chill, right? I have maybe what? A whole year to just enjoy myself and then I come back next Ramadan. And that is because Laylatul Qadri Khairun Min Alfi Shahar. The night of Al Qadr, which is better than a thousand months. I stood up on every night of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. I must have caught Laylatul Qadr, and because of that, I mean an amazing place in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, my brothers and my sisters, is a huge problem. And that is simply because we have to worship Allah between khawf and raja. How do we even know that these acts of worship have been accepted from us? Can anyone give me a guarantee now that my Ramadan in 2021, right? Was it 22? The last one. 22. Has been accepted from me. My fast has been accepted from me. My Qiraatul Quran has been accepted from me. My Qiyam in the night has been accepted from me. Can anyone give me a guarantee that that's the case? La Wallah. This is why a Sa'di in his short poem called Manzumatu al Sayru ila Allahi wa Dar al Akhirah. Or a Sayri ila Allahi is Mudafi Lay. A Sayri ila Allahi wa Dar al Akhirah, right? He mentions a quality from the qualities of the awliya, the close beloved servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
He says, وَهُمُ الَّذِينَ بَنُوا مَنَازِلَ سَيْرِهِمْ بَيْنَ الرَّجَى وَالْخَوْفِ لِلْدَّيَّانِ The awliya, the righteous beloved servants of Allah Azza wa Jal, they have structured their path to Allah Azza wa Jal between these two qualities, hope and likewise fear. Whenever they do a righteous deed, they ask Allah, Ya Allah, accept it from me. Right? Oh Allah, accept it from me because there's a possibility of it being rejected. Hmm? Did you know, my brothers and my sisters, the Salaf, and when we say the Salaf, we intend by it the three golden generations, right? As soon as they come out of Ramadan, they would beg Allah Azza wa for six months. Oh Allah, accept Ramadan for us. And then the, 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 the second six months, they would ask Allah, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. Six months this, and then six months that. Because they weren't deluded individuals who were complacent. Right? And that's extremely, extremely important. One of the greatest benefits that we can take away from Surah Al-Hujurat. أنزل الله هذه السورة ليؤدب بها أهل الإيمان In order to in order to discipline the people of Iman, to adorn them with the best of etiquettes. This is after they became Muslims, but they are still in need of becoming better and better. Right? And this is how we are. We want the highest part of a Jannah. We are always looking for ways to better ourselves. Now, second point that I really wanted to mention last week, which crossed my mind was, we might look at the surah and think to ourselves, the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to start the people with akhlaq, etiquettes, Surah Al-Hujurat. It's an important surah from the surah of the Quran, right? And it focuses mainly on what? Akhlaq, etiquettes, manners. And then someone also looks at the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I was only sent, I was only sent to perfect your manners. Tayyib, don't we hear all the time that the call and the message of the prophets was starting the people with the tawheed? Tayyib, isn't this a little bit contradictory now? On one hand, the Prophet is saying, I was only sent to Perfect your morals, your etiquettes and your manners. And then there's another verse which says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ There's not a single prophet except that he was sent uh, to call the people to a tawheed. That they worship Allah Azza wa sincerely and they stay away from the taghut. And that is anything that is going to destroy your tawheed. Right? Deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't that contradictory? Huh? How do we reconcile between the two? Can anyone tell me? Huh? Jamil, there are two types of etiquettes. Right? Your etiquettes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then also your etiquettes with the creation. This is why our Sheikh Amir Bahjati has a poem which is called Manzumat Ahsan al Akhraq. The poem of the best of etiquettes. Right? He says in there, فَأَوَّلًا رَاعِ مَعَ اللَّهِ الْأَدَبِ بِتَرْكِ لِثْمِ وَبِفِعْلِ مَا وَجْبِ The first etiquette, he says, right? Make sure you have good etiquettes with Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? By leaving off sinnings, by leaving off sins, and then also by doing that which has been made obligatory upon you. That's the most important etiquette. وَلِذَلِكْ Wallahi, One thing that really saddened me was some time ago I saw a clip going round of a very well-known, if I mention his name, everyone's going to know, but we don't want to drop any names, right? Very well-known YouTuber. And they were in Times Square in New York. I think you guys have heard of it, right? The Muslims, they were praying taraweeh there and because, of course, the Muslims were being intimidated, right? They were being intimidated. He grabbed the mic and he said the following. Brothers, the kuffar, they want a reaction from us, which is very true. They will try to intimidate you, right? 
So they could get a reaction out of you and then they will use that as ammunition to tarnish the image of Islam. You guys remember when the Hindutva were causing a lot of mayhem here? Milton Road, when it was announced that Allahu Alam, who even organized this rally, right? It could have been some of the Hindus that organized this rally, put the poster out just so the Muslims could come and then it could be used to tarnish Al-Islam. Allahu Alam. As soon as the Muslims, our brothers, they came to this area, all of the media was there. You had so many different media outlets all holding their cameras. Imagine that. Just waiting for one opportunity so they could what? Tarnish the image of Islam. That's why I grabbed the mic and I told them, guys, we have to be smart here. They are just waiting for a reaction from us. This is, of course, the way the kuffar, right? Looking for every opportunity. The Jews and the Christians will never be pleased with you until you follow their religion. Right? What was the other verse? There's another one. Right? The Jews and the Christians. They wish huh, that they could pull you out of the religion. You know why? Because of hasad, because of envy. They are burning with envy when they see thousands of people all prostrating together, all doing ruku' together, right? They say that New York is a city that never sleeps, right? I believe it's Mecca, a city that never sleeps, where they all come together and they are all praying together side by side, doing ruku', doing sujood. And that's what causes the enemy of Islam to really, really burn. So they're always looking for ways to tarnish the religion of Islam so the people can be chased away. Right? They really wish that they could extinguish the light of Allah. But Allah Azza wa Jal refuses to allow that to take place. Right? So anyways... That wasn't even part of the lecture, brothers. This whole tangent that I went on. Alakulli Hali was speaking about New York, right? They were trying to intimidate the Muslims. So a brother grabbed the mic and he said the following. Was the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I'm just paraphrasing here, something along the lines of to call you to the Quran, and then he says, No. To call you to Tawheed, no. But rather he was sent to correct your morals and your manners. It's a problem. And the video is going round and round and round. Right? And this is sometimes, you know, when you think about it, what's the root cause of ignorance maybe reaching a big audience of people? It's when an individual does not study the basics of his religion. He doesn't build himself a strong foundation. He will come out and he'll start saying these kind of things. These platforms are very, very very, very important in how we deal with it, right? And it can be very dangerous as well, right? So, like I said, our brother Anas Khair gave us the answer. The etiquette is of two types. The etiquette is with Allah and the etiquette is with the creation, right? So there's no contradiction between the two. Yes, when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I was sent to establish the correct manners and to perfect your morals. Naam, this is true. Naam, with Allah Azza wa and also with the creation. So there's no contradiction between the two. Arafat. Also, I want to mention, inshaAllah ta'ala, when Allah Azza wa Jal sent down, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amnu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. O you who believe, do not raise your voice over the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thabir ibn Qais ibn Shammas upon hearing this because he was someone who had a very loud voice right he said أَنَّ الَّذِي كُنْتُ أَرْفَعَ صَوْتِي عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَبِطَ عَمَلِي أَنَا مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ 
وجلس في أهله حزينا فتفقده رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فانطلق بعض القوم إليه فقالوا له تفقدك يا رسول الله تفقدك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما لك After this verse came down he said I was the one who used to raise his voice over the president's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم's voice it's speaking about me right because what did Allah عز وجل say لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم Your actions will become fruitless All that which you work so hard for because you raised your voice over the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam or you decide now to do that, right? Your actions will become fruitless. Your Ramadan maybe of 2022, huh? nothing left. Haba'an manthura. They'll become like scattered particles. Huh? And we mentioned last week, I believe, this is also now referring to Allah Azza wa Jal or the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi saying something and then you pushing your opinion over what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Or when someone is quoting a hadith, you start raising your voice over him. Any mushkila. The benefit that I want to take from this, my brothers and my sisters, is Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shammas, he took this personally. Right? He took it personally. Sometimes when the khatib gives a khutbah, or the sheikh delivers a lecture, and we hear the speaker or the instructor warning against a particular concept, we think to ourselves, ah, oh, yes, my friend does that. Yes, I saw my uncle doing it. I saw so-and-so behaving like that. Right? Are we individuals who are self-critical that say to ourselves, you know, subhanAllah, this is something that I need to change about myself. That we take it personally. Right? I need to rectify this. Wallahi, if we had that kind of mind process, or thought process, should I say, or that mindset, our lives would be so much more different. Always looking for ways to better ourselves, we would become extremely, extremely humble. Yeah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jalla says, those who call out the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from behind the rooms. It's called Surah Al-Hujurat, right? It means rooms. يعني, the rooms that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wife used to live in. أكثرهم لا يعقلون. There was a... Uh, <coughs> we mentioned before, right? Does anyone remember the tribe that became Muslim? The tribe Bani Tamim. They were a courageous, right, brave group of people that were feared, especially on the battlefield. Right? So it really brought the Messenger a lot of joy when they became Muslims. From amongst them, Qama Rajulun Fakali Ya Rasullah. He began to call out the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Min Wara al Hujurat. Someone now done that in front of your house. How would you feel? He's knocked, knocked, knocked three times, right? And no one opened the door. And then he starts calling out, Muhammad, Muhammad. In front of everyone. How would you feel? Right? This is why from the etiquette is that you knock three times and then you keep it moving. Huh? You keep it moving. You don't knock the fourth time. Who can give me the verse where Allah Azza wa Jalla talks about Seeking permission and then going back. Surah An-Nur. Khayr buyutikum hatta sallimu ala ahli adhalikum khayr no lakum na no there's another verse. Wa in qila lakum farji'u hu azkarakum. Three times you knocked. Huh? No one opened it. Leave. Taib, can we apply that now also to phones? Call him. Doesn't pick up. Call him a second time. And then the third time. Fourth, fifth, sixth. Huh? Drive him crazy. Up until he blocks you. And then you say, why'd you block me? Well, I feel like doing that sometimes. The guy just huh, blasts my phone. 
You can't do anything when someone's calling, 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 calling. Now, some of our scholars have mentioned that this also applies to the phone. Because when you're going to someone's house, you want to interact with him, right? You want to speak to him. Here, likewise, you want to speak to that person. So then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came out and this man said to him, Ya Rasulullah, إِنَّ حَمْدِي زَيْنْ وَإِنَّ دَمِّي شَيْنْ فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَمْ ذَاكَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ This man from amongst Bani Tamim, he said, Our praise will lift you, will raise you. And if we criticize, it will bring you down. Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, ذَاكَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? I think it's very, very important to mention, my brothers and my sisters, the statement of Al Imam Malik, rahmatullahi alayhi. Right? Because we, as individuals, we tend to focus a lot on what people have to say. Right? So, what do we do? We always look to please them. We'll do certain things, and we might even end up displeasing Allah Azza wa Jal. SubhanAllah. And just so we can be in their good books. Sahih. When it comes to marriages, weddings, when it comes to gatherings, when it comes to marrying our children off, Sahih. The number one focus is what is my family going to say about X, Y, and Z? Or what are the extended relatives going to think about us making this small wedding? It is from our ada, our cultural practice, that we blast music and that the groom comes in and he starts what? Rubbing shoulders with women. Sahih. We can't change the ada. Our family will become extremely, extremely upset. So we can't break the family ties over just one night and we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sahih. You know Ibn al Jawzi. I haven't mentioned him. Let me mention the statement of Imam Malik. He said, Aslih ma baynak wa bayna Allah, yuslihu Allah ma baynak wa bayna nas. Rectify that which is between you and Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of that which is between you and the people. Another very profound statement that I came across is when Ibn al Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned, Ajibtu liman yatasanna'u lin nas, wa yansa anna gulubuhum biyadillah. It amazes me. How someone really goes out his way to please others. He does things just so they could praise him. Or they, can think, they could think good of him. And then he forgets that their hearts are in the hands of Allah Azza Isn't it Allah Azza that can change the hearts of the people? What's my evidence? When the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِنَّ الْقُلُوبَ بَيْنَ أُصْبُعَيْنَ مِنْ أَصَابِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The hearts are in between the two fingers of Allah Azza wa Subhanallah. In sha'an yuqimu aqamu, in sha'an yuzigu azaga. If Allah subhanahu wants to keep it firm, he does so. If Allah azza wants to deviate, he does so as well. This should be our number one priority, my brothers and my sisters. Today the people will praise you, tomorrow they will drop you. Right? When they see the people giving you a hard time, you see them, huh? Drifting away, gravitating away from you. But when you're getting a lot of publicity, and everyone is flocking around you. Oh, you know, we were friends before, Sahih. Huh? That's Bani Adam for you. That is the children of Adam for you. One day they drop you, tomorrow they praise you and lift you. Right? This is why we should just be concerned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now this man, what is, what is, he, what is, what is he saying? Inna hamdi zayn wa dammi shayn. Us praising you is going to lift you. And us criticizing you, or defaming you is going to what ruin your reputation. Now Allah. It may well be that you seclude yourself with Allah Azza wa and you pray two rakaat and you make dua in your sujood. Huh? That whatever you thought was coming your way will be lifted. Right? So quickly. I want to mention my brothers and my sisters how to really drop in the eyes of the people. You are a person of authority a person of high status in your society. People look up to you. You might be a community leader. 
You might be a sheikh. You might be just a random brother who Allah Azza wa has gifted with the Quran and the people are saying, MashaAllah, we'll keep our Quran. Huh? I said that right, sah? I practice my Somali in lectures. Huh? The, the, the young man, MashaAllah, who memorized the Quran, Allahu Akbar. Everyone's speaking about him. Right? Someone who the people think good of, but then all of a sudden, you drop in the eyes of the people. How do you drop in the eyes of the people? Ibn al Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi told us this. You know what he said, guys? And it's one of my favorite statements that I always constantly remind myself of. He said, Ra'aytu aqwaman min al muntasibin lil ilm ahmalu nazar Allah azza wa jalla fil khalawat famaha mahasina dhikrihim fil jalawat. He said, I saw some people of knowledge. He's not talking about the average Joe. He's speaking about a person of knowledge. It could be someone who studies the Quran, memorizes the Quran, or he has taken that path in seeking knowledge, or it could be a sheikh or a mufti. People like that. They have high statuses in our society, like everyone looks up to them. Huh? When Shaykh Abdul Basir walks into the masjid, Right? People show respect. Sheikh. Sahih? Says, What did they fall into? What was their crime? They stopped being conscious of Allah when alone in private. Behind closed doors, they are a different person. It could be that he stands on a member and he says, Ittaqillah. Then him and his wife are watching Netflix behind closed doors. Huh? Watching American movies with all types of satanic scenes. It's only a matter of time before he drops in the eyes of the people. Or it could be that he's addicted to watching filth. But even then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concealing his sins. Right? So what happened? Look what he says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause the good things that are mentioned about them to disappear. Today you're being praised and all of a sudden, subhanAllah, people treat him like every other guy. The people don't look at him the same anymore. Them being present, them being there, is like them being absent. There was no sweetness in wanting to see them. And the heart stopped yearning in wanting to meet them. You know, sometimes, subhanAllah, huh? Sheikh is coming. Everyone's excited, right? Muhammad Hobla is coming today, huh? Everyone's excited to go to the lecture, right? I've come across before, subhanAllah, an individual that everybody wanted to meet, everybody was so excited to hear from. Years went by. It's not like that anymore. Stopped, right? SubhanAllah. In the Zayn with Ammi Shayn, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Daka who Allah. It's Allah Azza wa Jal. It's Allah Azza wa Jal who raises, it is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala who brings people down. All of this goes back to what, my brothers and my sisters, your private life. Right? If you want to keep your reputation, be someone who does more righteous deeds in private than that which he does in public. Huh? Some of the scholars, they were asked about ikhlas, they were asked about sincerity. You know what their response was? From the signs of sincerity is that you do more righteous deeds in private than what you do in public. It's so easy to do righteous things in public, my brothers and my sisters. But when you are alone, no one's watching, for you to start reciting Quran, for you now to pick up a pen and paper to seek knowledge, all of this is ibadah. Right? May Allah Azza wa Jal give us a tawfiq to be like those people. Also Ibn Hajar rahmatullahi alayhi, in his explanation of Sayyid al-Bukhari, Fath al-Bari, he says the following, Allah inna hikmat Allahi qad taqtadi fi ba'd al-ihyan fi haqqi ba'd al-nasi an yarfa Allahu anhu sitrah. It's from the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that sometimes 
He causes, you know, the veil that is covering that individual's sins to be lifted. You know, from the names of Allah Azza wa Jal is what? Sitir. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Covers your sins. I do not believe that someone's private sins that came out in public was due to him carrying out that sin the first time. Abidan. Or people catching you having done some haram behind closed doors. I don't believe this was the first time because this goes against the hikmah, the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal, naming himself with this particular name. It's never the first time. Allah Azza wa Jal gives us chance after chance after chance. And then at times Allah Azza wa Jal sees it fit to expose you. For everything that you've been doing behind closed doors or on your phone, for it to come out. Allah Azza wa Jal exposes his sins and his shortcomings to some of the creation. And he mentions reasons for that. Number one, to hasten his uquba, his punishment. Let me ask you guys a question, my brothers and sisters. Would we prefer to be exposed in this dunya for our sins to come out, which may lead us now to repent? Everyone comes to know about it. Or to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one sin. Which one is lesser of a problem, my brothers and sisters? Huh? That's the to be exposed is less of a problem, is better. He said it is better that everyone finds out about your shortcomings that you've been doing behind closed doors, huh? as opposed to meeting Allah as with just one sin. I don't think any of us, my brothers and my sisters, want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a single sin. Right? Inna bacha rabbika shadeed. Punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a light thing, my brothers and my sisters. Right? We are extremely shy of the creation finding out about our sins. We feel embarrassed, right? Why don't we have that same, right? Why don't we have that same attitude with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Al Malikud Diyan. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes him. In this dunya, because a lot of the time when you get exposed and everyone finds out about it, you tend to be very regretful and remorseful. You tend to what? Huh? Really hold yourself to account. And then you meet Allah Azza wa Jal with a clean slate, inshaAllah ta'ala. Or it could be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to notify that individual huh? that worse could happen later on. Or this could be a huge lesson for the people that find out about this individual being exposed. So then he has a different attitude to life. Otherwise that will happen to me. If I don't get my act together, I know I'm sinning behind closed doors. Allah Azza wa still hasn't exposed me, right? But he has now shown me that which is happening to so and so. Hmm. I need to get my act together. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi he says something very, very touching. He, is, he says, إِنَّ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ خَطَايَا لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Indeed, between you and Allah Azza wa Jal, there are sins that no one knows about except Allah Azza wa Jal. If you want Allah Azza wa Jal, right, to forgive you, then be someone who forgives others. Subhanallah. Jazaam min al amal. Also, Yahya ibn Mu'adh, from the great scholars of the past, he says, Man khan Allah Azza wa Jal sir, whoever tries to cheat Allah Azza wa Jal, or is treacherous, right? When in private, hatta kasirrahu fil alaniya, Allah Azza wa Jal will expose him, will uplift that veil that is covering his sins in public. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, says, ذنوب الخلوات سبب لانتكاسات 
وعبادتُ خلوات سبب الثبات. The private sins that we do in in a, in a, when we are alone, my brothers and my sisters, is a big reason why you will go astray. Sometimes you ask yourself this this question, right? Why is it all of a sudden I can't, right? I can't even identify myself anymore. Huh? I've completely lost my way. I'm I'm a different Muhammad to what the people knew five years ago. Hey, I can't even recognize myself anymore. What's happened? Maybe because of the private sins. And he says, وَعِبَادَةُ الْخَلَوَاتِ سَبَبٌ للثبات. And you doing acts of worship when alone is a huge reason that Allah will keep you firm. Ibn Al-Qayyim then quoted some of the righteous of the past and he said, كُلَّمَا طَيَّبَ الْعَبْدُ خَلْوَتَهُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ طَيَّبَ اللَّهُ خَلْوَتَهُ فِي الْقَبْرِ the more you work on your relationship with Allah Azza wa when you are by yourself, the more Allah Azza wa Jal, right, will glow and, and better your situation when you are alone in the grave. لا تكن وليا في الظاهر عدوما لله في الباطن Mentioned this line of poetry. I was quote, uh, quoting the Salaf. Do not be right, a wali, a saint in public. But then you are the enemy of Allah Azza wa Jal behind closed doors. Very, very quickly, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to stop with Allah al Bari. And then you guys can watch the highlights. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu in jaakum fasiqun bi naba'in fatabayyanu. Wa fi riwayatin, ya ayyuha alladhina amanu in jaakum fasiqun bi naba'in fatathabbatu. Oh, you believe. If a fasiq comes to you with a piece of news that is important, a naba is very different to a khabar. Amma yatasa'alun anin naba il azim. If you translate it, literally means news, right? Or some piece of information, right? But like we always say, the English language doesn't give the Arabic language its true justice, it's very limited. And Naba is the Khabarun Azim. It's a very, very important piece of information. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose it, right? Very important piece of information or news. Then what? Sabbatu. Right? Verify this information. Check it. Don't just run with it. Who's a Fasiq? A Fasiq, my brothers and my sisters. When you translate it literally, it means someone who transgresses. Someone who transgresses. Sahib al Maraqi in his Alfiya of Usul Fiqh, he says, Wal'adlu man yajtanibu al kabaira, wa yattaqi fil aghlab al sagaira. The opposite of fasiq is someone who's what? Adl. If you translate that literally, it means upright. But we need to what? Go in a little bit deeper to have a correct understanding of the qualities that a adl has. He says, وَالْعَدْلُ مَنْ يَجْتَنِبُ الْكَبَائِرَةِ By the way, brothers and sisters, you would have to be adlun in order for your testimony to be accepted in court. Did you know that? You can't be a fasiq. So he says here, مَنْ يَجْتَنِبُ الْكَبَائِرَةِ He who stays away from major sins. وَيَتَّقِي فِي الْأَغْلَبِ الصَّغَائِرَةِ and the majority of the time, he stays away from minor sins. This person is Adil. So the opposite is a Fasiq. A Fasiq is someone who will carry out major sins. Right? And then minor sins, don't even ask. Right? That's a person who's a Fasiq. Right? Of course, you're going to make mistakes. That's why he didn't say that the Adil is someone who does not commit any minor sins whatsoever. No, you're going to make mistakes. You're a human being. This is something that is universal. كل بني آدم خطاء Every son of Adam is someone that not just makes one or two mistakes. That خطاء صيغة المبالغة Always makes mistakes. Right? So now we have an idea. Now you ask yourself the question, which of the two categories do a lot of people fall into, especially when they bring you a piece of information? And even then, it's always just best if there is a lot at stake to double check that information. 
but to triple check it, especially in today's day and age. Al Kadib Kathir, right? Especially in the era of social media. Everything is being posted. And sometimes, subhanAllah, about the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are ahadith, narrations that are being attributed to him. And of course, because we have good intentions, we receive it on WhatsApp and we just send it out. We need to double check it, guys. Otherwise, someone else, someone else is going to run with a narration that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bari minu, is free from. What did the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say? Man yaqul alayya ma lam aqul, faliyatabawa maqa'adhu min anar. Whoever says about me, that which I didn't say, let him book his seat in the hellfire. It's more easier than booking your flight to uh, France. Huh? It's more easier. Because here you just have to quickly say it, that when you want to go to France, or when you want to go to Umrah, you have to go to the computer, and then you have to go website, you have to take your bank card out. It's a 10 minute process, صحيح? Or maybe even longer than that, 10 minutes. Especially if you're trying to go to Umrah. And you have to visit the travel agents. Huh? It takes a bit of time. You book your seat to go to Umrah. Booking your seat in the hellfire is a lot quicker, my brothers and my sisters. You just have to say about the Messenger of Allah, which he didn't say. Verifying information, my brothers and my sisters, is extremely, extremely, extremely important. And it is as if this concept does not exist, especially on Twitter. Sahih? You find individuals attributing something to another. Everyone's jumping on it. Retweet, quote tweet, eh? send it around. Bukh. Right? Shall we go through the Sabah Nuzul of uh, Abdullah last time he had some observations as to why this ayah came down. And had the Mahali Khtilaf Bain Ahl Ilm as to whether this narration is actually uh, authentic or not. Right? They say or it has been attributed to uh, to some that this verse came down uh, with regards to Walid ibn Uqbah when he was sent by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Bani al-Mustaliq to collect the sadaqat, to collect the charities. Right? And of course because there was issues between him and this tribe before Islam when he got close to them he got a little bit scared. He said, maybe these guys are going to come out on me. Huh? They just went back to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, oh Messenger of Allah, they wanted to kill me, right? And they are not interested in paying the zakat or the sadaqat. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got extremely angry. And he was even about to get an army ready. Right? But Subhanallah, one of the uh, tribe members of Bani Mustariq managed to reach the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and arrive just in time and informed him, oh Messenger of Allah, we was expecting Walid ibn Uqba to arrive, but he never arrived. We just wanted to double check what's happening. So the information was verified, right? And it became very, very clear that Walid ibn Uqba just said, had some whispers that he struggled to deal with, right? Subhanallah. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not go ahead with what he hamma and yaf'al. Taib. I want everyone, inshaAllah Ta'ala, to take away these six points in how to deal with a nammam. Who can tell me who a nammam is? Who's a nammam? In English, they translate as a tail carrier. هو من ينقل الأخبار على وجه الإفساد. It is the person who carries tales in order to cause corruption. Hmm? You guys heard of a tale carrier? Right? He comes to you and he says, Oh, so and so said this to you, Abdullah. استغفر الله العظيم. Huh? He even comes across as extremely righteous. You know that guy? Huh? He said X, Y, and Z about you. Astaghfirullah. This person is a mufsid ala wajh al ard. He is a corrupter on the face of this earth. I have a qaida, and this qaida was mentioned by 
حسن البصري يصير من نم إليك نم عليك whoever brings you information right saying oh so and so said x y and z about you it's only a matter of time before he does the same to you agreed من نم إليك نم عليك it is as simple as that huh? Also, I believe it was Hassan al-Basri rahmatullahi alayhi who mentioned, right? He said the Nammam yufsidu fi sa'ah ma la yufsidu sahiru fi sana. The magician, my brothers and my sisters, what is one of the magic uh, spells that he does that is mentioned in the Quran? I'll give you guys a clue. 16th page, Surah Al-Baqarah. Huh? What does he do? Good. فيتعلمون منهما ما يفرقون به بين المرء وزوجه. Right. A very well known magic practice, my brothers and my sisters, is separating between loved ones, like the husband and the wife. It happens and is very, very widespread. Right. This is mentioned in the story of Harut and Marut when Allah Azza sent them to the people of Babylon. It was the first civilization. Right. And they were sent to the people of Babylon as a test. There were two angels, Harut, Allah sent them to teach magic. طيب. Allah sent the two angels to teach them magic? To teach them kufr? Yes. But they would come with a huge disclaimer. إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ فِتْنَةٌ لا تكفر. We are a fitna to you. We are a test. Do not commit kufr. The angels will say to them, don't commit kufr. We have been sent by Allah as, as a test. Either you walk away or you take it from us at the expense of your religion. Very, very common. Even here in Leicester, my brothers and my sisters. Huh? And don't think, my brothers and my sisters, that the magician is going to wear the Harry Potter hat. You guys know the Harry Potter? The, huh? And he's going to be wearing that big cloak. And when you walk into his house, he has all of these potions. Huh? And the, the magic ball. And he's doing this. This is what they indoctrinated us with, huh? From a very young age, Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. Sahih? The magician will look like me. Wearing a big jubba, huh? Cloak. He's got a long beard. Hmm? And he's carrying out magic spells. Right? He's a sahir. Wal'iyadu billah. So anyways, why did I mention all of that? These two, they have a similarity. The sahir and also the namam. Who's the namam? The one who carries tails. What is the common feature between them both? Who can give it to me? What is the common feature or the common denominator for you mathematicians? Huh? They target victims. Anyone else? Huh? Between who? Naam, they cause corruption right, and division between loved ones. They separate between them. The magician, he carries out a magic spell to cause a split between husband and wife, father and son, mother and daughter, two blood brothers that love one another, but all of a sudden they are at war with one another. And then a man does the exact same thing as well. He might even go to a whole tribe and say, oh, that tribe said this, or they get ready straight away. Yeah? And they're fighting with one another because of one shaitan that came in between them. And not even on social media. Someone just comes and says something. <clears throat> Ask Donald Trump, a war can take place on Twitter just because of one tweet, a war. How many times did you need to start a war with the North Korean guy? What's his name? Kim jong Hu. Huh? Ibn Qudam, rahmatullahi alayhi, he teaches us how to deal with this namam. I'm going to finish, inshallah ta'ala. Anyone who brings you a piece of information to you about what so-and-so said, Right? Upon you is to do these six things. I know it can be extremely, extremely tempting to ask for more. Really? What did he say? Please. Wallah, I'm not going to tell anyone. Sahih. He says, do these six things. Number one. Number one. You do not take anything that comes out of his mouth. Why? Because he's a fasiq. He is someone who's engaging in a major sin. And we know 
a fasiq's statement or testimony in court is rejected. Agreed? So you can't even believe, you can't even trust this guy. Right? He's worse than a compulsive liar. Number two, my brothers and my sisters, الثاني, أن ينهاه عن ذلك وينصحه. You need to advise him. And you need to prohibit him from doing this particular act that he's engaging in. Stop it. That's how you should react. That's number two. Number three, guys. أن يبغضه في الله That you hate him for the sake of Allah Azza wa فإنه بغيض عند الله And that is because he is what? Despised by Allah Azza wa Jal. And of course, someone who's engaging in major sins, you don't dislike him the same way you dislike an innovator. And you cannot dislike an innovator the same way you dislike a mushrik or a kafir. This is the issue of al-wala wal bara Right? Love and hate for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's mentioned in the Quran. This is what our Tawheed stands on. Even recently, I gave a khutbah. It's called the king, the queen, and my aqeed as a Muslim. We just had to go back to the drawing board. Right? We hate what Allah hates and we love what the Prophet وسلم, and Allah Azza wa Jalla love, right? This is what our deal is. We hate shirk, we hate kufr, we hate bid'ah, we hate major sins. So for more information, inshaAllah ta'ala, and a lot more detail, please go back to the khutbah. That is how many? Three. And it's written down, huh? Number four. أَنْ لَا يَظُنَّ بِأَخِيهِ الْغَائِبِ السُّوءِ I'm informed my brothers and my sisters that you should not have bad thoughts about that person he's speaking about. Or oh, he's saying to you, huh? Ah, ya Muhammad, so-and-so said X, Y, and Z about you. Who's that so-and-so? We'll call him Isa. I could easily end up having bad thoughts about Isa, right? I shouldn't. Right? You should not have what? Bad thoughts about an individual. Later on, we are told about, Ya you who believe, stay away from a lot of bad thoughts, speculations, assumptions. Huh? These two hands, they go hand in hand with one another. What did I say? These two verses, they go hand in hand with one another. Number five. أن لا يحمله ما حكي له على التجسس والبحث في قوله تعالى ولا تجسسوا again it's also mentioned that this should not lead you now in wanting to spy he said oh so and so said x y and z what do you do you start sending huh, your troops to that person just to find out to fish for information because you would fall under what ولا تجسس uh, you would fall into التجسس which is Spying. Do not spy on one another. Allah tells us in this very surah. And number six. And la yarda li nafsihi ma naha anhu nammama fala yahki namimatahu. Muhammad came to you and he said, Isa is saying X, Y, and Z. You told Muhammad, don't do this. Ittaqillah, fear Allah. This is haram what you're doing. He leaves. Later on, you and... Ibrahim, your other friend, you guys are just sitting in the car together and you tell him, oh, guess what, man? Muhammad came up to me and he told me that Isa said about me X, Y, and Z. How can he say that about me? Habibi, you just prohibited, right? Muhammad from doing so. And now you are quoting, right? What Muhammad said to someone else? And then I just, this is number six. And we could easily fall into that. Does that make sense, my brothers and my sisters? Um, to conclude, my brothers and my sisters, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Ya yuhal ladin amanu, la yashar qawmun min qawm." Oh, you believe? Do not ridicule and make fun of one another. This is something that is haram. This is something that is extremely, extremely common when it comes to joking, right? Sahih. You joke around, you make fun of others, especially when you go on TikTok, right? It's not even just them joking with their friends anymore. A man's joking with his mother. Turning her into a laughing stock. She doesn't know that she's been recorded. He's recording her. Uh, he's doing this. Absolutely taking the mick out of his mother. And then he posts it on TikTok because he knows he's going to get a million views. 
ظلمات بعضها فوق بعض it's not just even one sin anymore it is the sin of mockery and also what عقوق making fun of your mother right turning into life laughing so for millions to enjoy right Islam is not against joking the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam played and joked and he toyed around with some of his companions right I have a whole lecture on my YouTube channel it's called April Fool's Day six conditions of joking there's another clip we just cut it out it's called six conditions of joking very very quickly number one is that you don't mock the deen of Allah when making jokes you don't mock the deen of Allah again this is very common on TikTok right on Instagram memes that's what they call him right number one mockery of the deen that in fact brothers and sisters takes you out of the religion did you know that it's an act of kufr that takes you out of the fold of Islam Number two, right? You don't mock that person. Number three, you are truthful. Right? April Fool's Day, what happens? Oh, I remember, subhanAllah, I'll never forget this. Brother came up to me, he goes, Oh, your grandmother, she fell off the balcony. Imagine how it'll feel. And he goes, April Fool's Day. Oh, well, I got so angry. Huh? I got so angry at this brother. <clears throat> Number three is what? To be truthful. Number four, not to shock that individual when you're joking with him. You know, back in the day, when you used to wait for the bus, huh? the bus is coming and we're standing there, right? There's one standing on the edge of the pavement. We'd grab him, huh? push him in front of the bus and then pull him back. Pull him back. We'd scare the life out of him. Or someone is sleeping, huh? we take water psh, on his face. Nahtin. Huh? And the guy wakes up in shock. Number five, to not be excessive. If you want to be known as the class clown, then do so. But no one ever takes you seriously. Or like the boy that cried wolf. You guys heard of that story? Boy that cried wolf. Did anyone believe him after? And number six, that you pick the right time to joke. Al-Waqtul Munasib. When you're walking to the janazah, someone just passed away, you're going to bury him. Is that the right time to be joking? Well, like you'll see people joking around, brothers and sisters. Huh? Playing around with one another. On the way to a burial. SubhanAllah. I also remember when Sheikh said to me, I think it was Sheikh Abu Sama, in fact. He said, they asked his brother to recite some verses. Out of all the verses that he could pick, guess what he picks? After you've divorced your wife twice, then either do this or do that. And then when they asked him after, he goes, yeah, I was just joking, innit? Right? Or subhanAllah, your dad is in a serious city. Huh? Or his friends are there. And he tells you to go and do X, Y, and Z. And then you start making jokes out of your father. You start messing around with him in front of his friends. And to make things even worse, you record him. And then you put it onto the internet. Hey, let me ask you guys a question, right? What if someone says, oh, he doesn't mind being mocked? He's okay with it. Can I just make jokes out of him? Is it still allowed even if he doesn't mind? And that is simply because Allah told you don't mock whether he likes it or not. It's like somebody saying, oh, I don't mind if my daughter commits dinner. You ask him for permission, oh, can I do dinner with him? He goes, yeah. Are you allowed to go do it? Just because he's okay and then she's okay with it as well? Abedan. La yaskhar qawmun min qawm. You, Allah, told you. You are part of the people of Iman, right? Don't mock. And subhanAllah, we are living in a time and an age. If someone, you ask him, right? You ask him. Um, do, you, do you get offended when I call you, like, you know? People make these fat jokes, huh? He goes, no, 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 I'm not offended. If he says that he is offended, right? People laugh at him even more. Oh, he can't take jokes anymore. Ha, 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 and they're laughing at him. Sahih? 
you don't know what the brother is going through. The moment he goes back home, he might show a face to you, but then behind closed doors, what? He feels extremely, extremely sad. Say, And you're going to sleep, what? With your friend, extremely, extremely saddened. I would love to go on, but I'm going to leave you guys, inshallah. I know some of you guys want to go to big sheikhs in town, huh? MashaAllah. Um, I'm going to stop it then, inshallah. I think it starts at 6, right? Last week we went on all the way to 40 past, but we'll stop here, inshallah. Barakallah feekum. Bahsanallah alaykum. Is there going to be any more sessions? I've been told uh, there's classes that goes on which I'm disturbing. Huh? So, um, inshallah ta'ala, if there is a new series that restarts, you will be notified. It will be all over the internet, bi ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khairan for coming, brothers and sisters. I told Anas, I'm not expecting anyone to turn up. He goes, no, I have good thoughts of the Muslims. They are going to come. Why? Because the World Cup final. And the World Cup final. Women don't even normally watch football. Or is that a misogynistic comment to make? Generally speaking, they don't watch football. But when it comes to the final, especially penalty shooter, they will come and sit down. Sahih. So I know how obsessed we are with football and whatever have you. For you to sacrifice that in order to come to listen to Qala Allah, Qala Rasulu, Qala Sahabatu Lali Tamwihi. It's honestly something that I really appreciate and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give you guys the utmost best and to give you all the highest part of a Jannah. سبحانك اللهم بحمدك شهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة I think you had a question huh what was your question sorry I didn't even look at it you sent me you 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 sent me a message on phone right I've got 500 unread messages so this is why I didn't get back to you I kept on seeing your thing popping up hey what was your question is it private Hmm. Well, I'm not I've not heard of that narration before when I gave that lecture about April Fool's Day which is on my YouTube channel I gave a lot of examples of how the Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi joked so Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi joked providing that we meet these six conditions that I mentioned and I hope all of you guys have memorized it Right? There's no harm in joking. The Messenger of Allah never used to walk around, uh, walk around uh, Abu San Qamtari. It wasn't like that. His face all doom and gloom. La. He had a pleasant face. He smiled a lot. Huh? Um, when you said the issue of his interest, I thought you were going to ask me the statement of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It's in Tirmidhi. He would say, لا يبع في سوقنا إلا من تفقه في الدين. One should not trade in our markets except after learning his religion. Because an ignorant person now trading in the markets, what is that going to do? Riba, ignorance of buying and selling, transacting will start spreading, right? Subhanallah. Today we just jump into cryptocurrency, forex. By the way, I don't give a fatwa on cryptocurrency. No one asks me as I'm walking out. But I will tell you something. They are not doing the best at the moment. But they're doing good at the moment. Huh? A lot of brothers said this. Huh? I think there's a lot of investors here. Huh? They're not doing the best. But every now and again, something pops up. We just jump in and straight. No, you have to know. Is it halal or not? Do you want to even have one dirham of haram that you're dealing with, which will take the barakah out of everything in your life? Huh? So they would learn. Anyone else has a question? Wallahi, in a nice way to say to them, you know, this is only going to lead you to the hellfire, something that is haram. Fear Allah Azza wa No, it's better to actually tell them because they will keep on doing it. 
to others and their sins will increase, right? And you do it in a nice way. Don't just grab them up huh? or get violent with them. I remember it happened to me before I was on a bus and then uh, some Somali lady started backbiting me. She thinks I'm some Pakistani guy, right? Uh, some Hindi, some Timajalea, huh? And then I said to her, Habarir, huh? Allah, I'll never forget her face. The way she got so shocked. Somali, but I, yeah. Are you Somali? She said, I can put on different hats in it. I know different languages. I'm still trying to learn Somali. Huh? Good. Yeah. Very good. Our Imam Isa, he asked, if you want to warn someone about the bad people that he hangs around with, does that also fall under backbiting? There are six scenarios that An Nawawi Rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned. Imam An Nawawi Rahmatullahi alayhi in his Riyadh al Salihin. He has a whole chapter. Bab ma the chapter of what is permissible when it comes to backbiting. He mentioned six. And you can find these six in these lines of poetry where he says, Okay, that's the first one. Something along the lines of that. Six. One of them is when you're warning someone, right? Like, for example, I go to my father and I say, Your son, talk to him because you're in a better position to talk to him, right? Is what? Hanging around with that drug dealer. Is that backbiting? It is exempt from the general rule of speaking behind someone's back. Okay? Also, another scenario is you've been oppressed and you go to the mufti, I've been oppressed by so and so, what shall I do in this scenario? Adi. Right? And there's another four as well, inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to leave you guys, inshallah. Ahsanallah ilaykum, mubarakallah feekum. Right? And don't think that you attending today at a time when a lot of people are distracted, my brothers and my sisters, that this will go unnoticed. The reward is greater than when usually attending a lecture. Right? Right? The heedlessness is what? Widespread.